So good evening. Uh, first of all, I'm not that smart. Uh, like, thank you for this kind introduction. And, and uh, my, but my connections to here are much closer than for even uh, Dame Ang Ellen McSasser. Yeah. So, first of all, we work since 11 years for the Ford company. Yeah. So that's a Ford. And then uh, Brad Pitt said that one of the most, one of the three most important books he ever read was is Cradle to Cradle. So we have Brad and Ford here, so already in our work. Uh, so just that you see, I'm not that smart really. Yeah, I'm just a, a scientist, an engineer, a designer, and I want to talk to you, talk to you about uh, a different design concept, which is not that much about sustainability even, yeah? because uh, sustainability from my side is pretty boring. Yeah? So if I ask you, how is your relationship with your boyfriend, what do you say? Sustainable? Yeah. <laughs> then I'm really sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the minimum. So I want to talk to you about innovation. I want to talk to you about how to, we can use 30 years of blaming and shaming for innovation. And sure, it needs people who you can look up to. It needs people who can get people together. Yeah, Dave MacArthur definitely is a, a person you can learn from. And it needs people who moderate and facilitate dialogues in a society. But I'm personally, I'm not that great like Ellen. Yeah, so I'm biting fingernails, for example. I never take any cold showers here. Yeah, so. I don't do any sports, yeah, so just I'm pretty mediocre. Yeah, I'm only good in 5% of what you need to be good, and, and that's not that great. And sure, I'm really proud to be here. You have a lot of famous traditions, and we will later have a little chance to talk about, what, about your strengths and how we can support and how can we work together. There is money in it. That's first. Belgium put 100 million euros in cradle to cradle. And because there are not enough people who really, really do cradle to cradle, it's more noodle to noodle or noodle to noodle, yeah, something like that. Because right now, everybody in the European Union puts a cradle to cradle label on their activities just to get money from Brussels. So there are now cradle to cradle incinerators in Finland, cradle to cradle wastewater treatment systems in Slovenia. But there's no cradle-to-cradle -cradle money coming to Bradford, and that's why I'm here. You know, I want to make sure that you get a piece of that cake. But because Belgium put cradle-to-cradle -cradle, yeah, on top of their agenda, and Belgium is running the presidency, and I just ask you, everybody who's running a business, who is any, anyhow involved, please go back to the European Union and ask for money and put a cradle-to-cradle -cradle label on top of it. You later can put some content behind it. But you need to hurry up because the Belgian presidency ends at the end of the year. Traditionally, we take things, we make things and put things into landfills. So we talk about environmental protection when we destroy a little less. Yeah. The government says, please protect the environment, don't use so much water. Yeah. Uh, please protect the environment, don't make so much waste. Yeah. Please protect the environment, uh, reduce your electricity consumption, etc. But that's a very interesting term of protection. It would be the same if we would tell you, please protect your child, beat your child only three times instead of five times. Yeah? You don't protect when you destroy a little less. Yeah. In, in that logic, uh, East Germany has been protecting the environment so much better than West Germany just by inefficiency. Yeah? Because they couldn't destroy all the wetlands, so they protected the environment more. They just couldn't destroy the wetlands. They left a lot of contaminated spots behind, but overall, the species diversity was so much higher in East Germany than in West Germany, just by inefficiency. So if you do something wrong, don't make it perfect. Otherwise, it's just perfectly wrong. Yeah. So what we, what we do is we try, do, we take things, we make things, and we put them into landfills. And we, when we do reduce waste, we think we protect the environment. The whole planet, from cradle to grave, will be just a graveyard a little later. Yeah? But the result will be the same. Just when you try to be less bad, you're still bad. Yeah? So less bad is no good, it's just less bad. 
we were following a whole series of environmental disasters. Yeah, take Itai Itai in, in Japan, for example, cadmium contamination. Take Sevisa, Bhopal, Chernobyl, Basel. Yeah. All these environmental disasters led to this feeling it's better we would not be here. Yeah. Can you see when you go to supermarket, Salisbury, etc., they now are selling organic food. You think, oh, how great, it's organic. But isn't it amazing? There's not one organic label which allows that we are a part of it. Yeah? Every day, every morning, for 10 seconds, I fall into deep depression. Yeah? Because I'm sitting on my toilet, yeah? and the, the feces which I'm uh, getting rid of yeah, are not allowed to go back in biological systems. Yeah? <laughs> every day, we need to pick up two grams of phosphate and every day we need to put in the biosphere two grams of phosphate. There's far, far more radioactivity being mined by the phosphate industries and used in all nuclear power plants, far more. And phosphate is far more critical than oil, much more rare. Yeah. There's not one legal limit for radioactivity in fertilizer. Yeah. Now, it's not allowed that we are, can put our own materials back when we want to call it organic. It's only organic when we are not involved. So, isn't it sad? Only, nature is only okay when we are not there. Yeah. Maybe you know this joke says one planet meets another planet and says, you really look terrible today. And the other planet says, yes, I, I have homo sapiens. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the first planet says, don't worry, I had this before. It will disappear. Yeah. So we feel somehow so bad for being on this planet that we better don't do any organic which includes us. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Or how sad it is? So we, we have been growing up with all these environmental disasters and this leads to this uh, thing that we, in 1987, the officially United Nations coined the term sustainability yeah, as a goal, sustainable development. Look, but mm, that's, that's a, a, a oxymoron, yeah? either sustainable or development. Look, it was uh, the, the steam engine, yeah, the first railway was never sustainable for any horse transportation system. Yeah? So either sustainable or development, but both doesn't make sense. We just tried to combine it somehow because we felt so bad. And it, it's not, uh, not anyhow an accident that this happened in, in Oslo. Yeah? Yeah. So we talk about minimizing our footprint. Yeah? So when your, your footprint in Sweden or f Norway means you destroy the soil. That's why you need to minimize your footprint. You can do something if you want to min minimize your footprint. You can wear high heels, for example. But does it really help? So, but when you have your footprint in Italy, yeah, your footprint means the water stays long in the meadow. So a footprint is a disaster in the north, but in the south, the footprint means yeah, being beneficial for the others. Yeah. But this is where we are in 1987. We coined this term sustainability. And this is when it's dark and it's cold, you need to minimize, reduce, avoid. Sure, you need to do all the guilt management, otherwise you don't get through the winter. Yeah. And sure, our planet looks terrible. Yeah. If you look, we have, we have 12, yeah. coming back to Alan's work. Yeah. Yeah. If you look back over the Atlantic and look, go into the Northern Pacific, and you look here, areas, we have about five of these areas yeah, where which are bigger, the size is bigger than Europe, yeah. where the plastic concentration is up to 40 times higher than the plankton concentration. Yeah. I have been swimming in front of boats to stop them to, to dump uh, toxic waste in the oceans. Yeah. I have been climbing chimneys and uh, protesting against the environment. But there are more seals, more f birds, more, we more uh, turtles, being killed by plastics and by anything else. Yeah. How should we protect the whales when there's plastic? Yeah. The whole animal becomes a big stomach. These animals pick up the plastic and then the stomach grows and grows because they cannot digest the stuff. So, yeah, that is why we feel bad for being here because definitely we destroy the planet systematically. This is a baby, it's just the diapers of a baby. If you take the, the uh, Rotterdam uh, yeah, we analyze the waste situation. Yeah, so this is just one year diapers yeah, for one baby, one year. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you, if we analyzed, a baby takes about 7,500 diapers. So this is about 20% of the municipal waste stream. And because we are getting older, the diapers get bigger. Yes, there is some potential in it. Yeah. Um, but this is why we've, how we do deal with it. We say, yes, we are 100% bad, yeah, cradle to grave, 90% bad, 80% bad, bad, and our goal is zero. Yeah. I was invited to be at Cancun conference today, but I had the invitation by Alan, and I said, definitely, I will be here, because I was in Copenhagen. Yeah. And that was one of the worst nightmares you can imagine. It was about the weather like we have it right now, but it was minus 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So we are standing there in the dark. And the, I was standing there with the president of Israel, Shimon Peres, yeah. and the conference center was blocked for four hours because people were so angry. Yeah. Yeah. When it's minus 10 degrees Celsius, how could you talk about the greenhouse effect? Yeah. Everybody was thinking, could it be a little warmer? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's a question of design. When they put have, would have put the conference into Johannesburg the same day, it was about 50 degrees Celsius. They would have just turned off the air conditioning for one hour, yeah, and they would have signed everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a question of design. But this is how we feel. We said, yes, we are paying for the planet. We want to be reduce, avoid, minimize, and our goal is zero. This is called eco-efficiency. Yeah, and you can see this all up around the campus. Yeah, I had a chance to l see a little bit of what you're doing here. And, and this is all about eco-efficiency. Yeah, you see here, even in such a nice room, we separate our waste here. Yeah, isn't it funny how aesthetic, yeah, how nice? Yeah. Because we feel bad. And sure, yeah, we have a lot of reasons to feel bad. We, have, we are losing 5,000 times more topsoil in Europe right now compared to what we make. In one year, we lose the topsoil of 1,000 years, uh, of 5,000 years, yeah, in one year. Yeah. So in what people forget, uh, there is not a greenhouse problem, carbon uh, energy problem. It's a carbon management problem. Two-thirds of all the carbon is in topsoil. Yeah. So what we do is now, we are even growing in the United Kingdom uh, corn to make biogas. Yeah. When we grow one hectare of corn, we lose between 11 and 30 metric tons of topsoil a year. Yeah. So the carbon balance is always negative from the beginning. Yeah. I can give you endless examples. The European Union is importing yeah, 2 million tons of palm oil from Indonesia. Yeah. Isn't it funny or sad at the same time? Yeah. When you have one hectare of rainforest, it, it equals 7,000 tons of carbon. One hectare of palm oil plantation has 60 tons of carbon in it. Yeah. So we are cutting down the rainforest to make palm oil, to make biodiesel. Yeah. How sad. So we became very strong with cradle to cradle, in United, in, in, not in the United Kingdom, not in Europe, no, in the United States, because we had George Bush. Yeah. In Europe, the government pretends to do something. The European Union keeps us busy. They said, yes, we do something. We really save the planet. Yeah, in the United States, we had George Bush. Yeah. And that was beneficial, yeah. because George Bush clearly said, I don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to you. So if you don't do anything, it's up to you. It's your problem. So this is why these companies you can see in here, yeah, mostly first come from the United States, like Steelcase. Yeah. 